good afternoon, everybody. Um, in, uh, so, welcome to International Digital Diplomacy Conference. So, today's event, uh, I'll be moderating the panel two, which is we are discussing about the digital transformation at the SMEs. So, we have four interesting panelists today with me that will discuss with these SMEs. So uh, this is actually very interesting uh, forum that the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia have been uh, running. Actually, I'll be, I was also speaker and moderating in 2019, the regional event. Now, uh, after two years after that, so we have now having this ev international event. Uh, very interesting on this era, we'll do it on the hybrid model. So we're going to actually all our uh, uh, attendees here is already having a COVID testing. So, uh, and we're going to already deploy the uh, health uh, protocol for this event, yeah. So we have uh, four interesting panelists today. Uh, as we know, the digital transformation happened quite significantly because of the COVID. So as the main topic of this event is unmasking the new normal of uh, digital diplomacy. So uh, uh, without further ado, actually I would like to every each of the panelists to introduce uh, themselves yeah, one by one. And also you can start uh, uh, presenting uh, the, the event. So there'll be uh, four uh, panelists, which is uh, Ms. Uh, Siti Aziza, uh, the Deputy Minister of Entrepreneurship, Ministry of Cooperative and Small Medium Entri Enterprise of Republic of Indonesia. And then Mr. Rahmat Kaimudin, the Chief Executive Officer of Bukalapak. The third one is Ms. Monica Likama, the CEO of Enfuse Finland. And uh, the last one is Mr. Ibrahim Patel, the Managing Director of SIA Sosa Technologies. So good morning, uh, sorry, good morning for some in, in Europe, which is uh, Ms. Monica, good afternoon uh, for Ms. Siti, Mr. Rahmat, and uh, Mr. Uh, Abraham, you are in Durban, is it? You are still on mute. It's, it's good morning in South Africa as well. Oh, okay. Good morning in South Africa. Very interesting. So I think uh, in the beginning, uh, I would like to uh, Miss Siti to introduce uh, yourself. Uh, and you can also uh, start presenting uh, your deck. Uh, there will be seven minutes of uh, presentation session, introduction session. Your, the floor is yours, Miss Siti. Okay. So uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good morning for some of you. So uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So my name is uh, Aziza. Actually, uh, you can call me just Aziza. So uh, I'm uh, the uh, deputy of entrepreneurship in the uh, Ministry of uh, Cooperation and uh, Small and Medium Enterprises of Republic Indonesia. So uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, actually, I'm new to the uh, uh, ministry. Uh, prior to this job, uh, I uh, used to be a bankers, uh, insurers for some companies, as well as entrepreneur. So uh, uh, prior to joining uh, the uh, Ministry of Cooperative and SMEs, so I also uh, knew how to, you know, how to develop business, how to, uh, uh, that's uh, my uh, little conversation about myself or introduction about myself. So are we going to direct it to the uh, slides? Yeah, uh, please. Okay. Yes. Okay. Go okay, ahead, thank you. Aziza. Yeah. Sure, sure. So if uh, we are discussing about digital, uh, it's uh, one of uh, our focus in the uh, deputy of entrepreneurship. So actually, uh, we are currently uh, 
uh, doing a lot of uh, programs, activities to develop the uh, digitalization. So, in fact, uh, we just had a very uh, good, uh, you know, uh, event with uh, Parahmat, Thai Parahmat from Bukalapak. So uh, we call it the Roadshow Clinic. So why we call it like that? Because, uh, you know, uh, we still have a lot of uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the SMEs do not have any access or very lack or very low in terms of, uh, you know, digital literation. So that's why we were collaborate. We will collaborate with uh, you know Bukalapak on this case and uh, others um, players in the uh, banks and non banks to again giving a lot of uh, information, coaching, training to all people throughout Indonesia. So uh, we are saying that uh, we are looking at uh, this one. So for uh, big, big uh, cities, we don't have any problem on the literacy, but on small ones, we still uh, see, we're still facing a lot of, uh, you know, um, the, these uh, SMEs having a very uh, a small understanding on digital. Okay, so let me start uh, with uh, the presentation. Next slide, please. So this is the roadmap of uh, digitalization from uh, MSME and uh, cooperative. So if you look at the number of uh, digital onboarding, today we are having about 14.6 uh, million where uh, we targeted uh, on 30 million in 2024. So we still, uh, you know, not more than half, but uh, we are in three years, we are quite, I mean, uh, you know, uh, confident that uh, we can achieve the number with uh, all help uh, from all the players, all the stakeholders. So if we are talk, looking at the uh, digital corporate, there's about 100 cooperatives uh, today, and we are looking at the 500 cooperatives in 2024. And uh, if uh, we see the uh, export contribution of the SM, MSME, so today is about 15.2%, and uh, the target will be 176 in the 2024. So this is, uh, you know, we have a problem with this screen. Uh, yeah, okay. 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 So we are back. So this is basically uh, how we are going to see on the 2024 in terms of uh, digital onboarding, digital cooperative, as well as the contribution of the export. Next slide, please. So uh, next slide. Okay, so this is showing you the condition of uh, current MSMEs. Uh, today we have about 64% player. Okay, the pelaku UMKM today is about 64 million. But in terms of uh, the, uh, in terms of the uh, uh, companies, actually dominated by micro. So about uh, 68 sorry, 98.7% microeconomy and uh, the, to dominate the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, MS, MSMEs. And uh, if we are talking about microeconomy, the majority of them is a part of economic subsistence and a majority work in informal sector, which is uh, changing in constantly. So today they can, uh, you know, sell, um, we call it in Indonesia bakso, but tomorrow they can uh, sell sate. So they can, uh, you know, changing uh, very fast. And uh, because of, uh, sometimes they are, uh, most of the time they are looking at the uh, next door uh, shops. So they just follow what, what is, uh, you know, the, the best uh, sales. And uh, they have a very low and uh, business literation. And then uh, fairly limited access to bank, digital, and uh, you know other access. Well, for SMEs, the small enterprises, 
majority on the end product. So uh, comp uh, this, they have to compete with the uh, big, big enterprises, large enterprises, and uh, each of them creating their own brand, which uh, we know the cost of branding itself is quite high. And uh, only a few enterprises generating uh, the uh, value creation. Okay, so uh, uh, if we look at the uh, number of uh, population, uh, UMKM or uh, MSME is actually 99% of uh, uh, population. Uh, so 99% of the business population is uh, MSME and 97% uh, kerja or employment and then 14% contribution to export and then 22% on board or connected to digital, and then 60% contribution to the uh, GDP and 58% uh, of uh, national investment. So uh, if we look at the uh, comparison uh, with other countries, so uh, uh, we are still lower in terms of uh, uh, export. If you look at the uh, Singapore, Malaysia, Japan, Korea, while on the entrepreneurship uh, portion, we are also lower than other countries. We are at 3.47%, while uh, Malaysia and Thailand already above 4.5. 4 so, uh, and uh, Singapore, our next uh, country is about 876 So again, this is uh, the condition of uh, Indonesian current MSMEs. Next slide, please. Miss Aziza, since you only have seven minutes, maybe you can accelerate a little bit of the presentation. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Okay, so the uh, the model actually, uh, starting from the condition, approach and target assistance, and uh, you know, uh, 2024 target. What we, I want to highlight here is uh, we do uh, several approaches about digitalization. So whether reach the, the customer, whether or digital to get the supplier or the end to end. Of course, we are looking at the end to end. And uh, for this, uh, you know, digitalization project or program, we are working with university, association, and uh, the delivery platform and online shop. So, as I mentioned before, that uh, we just, uh, you know, had the uh, collaboration with Bukalapak as one of uh, the e commerce Indonesia. So, the target, uh, is uh, you know 30 million on the digital 500 digital co-op and uh, 3.90 uh, 95 percent entrepreneurship and 17.6 uh, percent on the export contribution next okay so this slide uh, i think uh, will uh, telling uh, you the story uh, the growth of uh, onboarding so comparing to last year, we are actually a double in terms of size. So on the 2019, uh, the onboarding number is about 8 million. Today, uh, already 14. So uh, we, I think uh, we get accelerated by uh, the pandemic as well. Okay, next slide. So basically, uh, we, uh, we cannot uh, work uh, alone. So to achieve all those targets, we need to uh, collaborate or we need collaboration with uh, a lot of uh, stakeholders, not just in the government, but also in the private sector. So e-commerce, uh, banking, and then, you know, delivery, and then the, uh, the insured tech and uh, everybody in the, uh, in the field. So actually uh, what we are doing uh, right now is, uh, next slide. Okay, we just had the, uh, you know, the uh, national coordination meeting for uh, cooperative and uh, MSME digital transformation. So uh, this is actually uh, just, uh, we just had it uh, last week. So we, uh, we expect uh, by having this uh, national coordination meeting, we can uh, having the uh, roadmap of uh, cooperative and MSME's uh, digitalization. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we consolidate the potential mapping and challenges, which at the end, you know, we can uh, identify the uh, digitalization target group 
and uh, up to the uh, formation uh, and development of uh, digitalization transformation program. Okay, next slide. Hello. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Hello. Next slide. Okay, so uh, this is uh, what I just mentioned to you that we are uh, currently working together with seven platforms on digital. So Bukalapak, Tokopedia, Blibli, Tanihat, Duanyam, Aruna, and Bineka. So uh, the idea is uh, to have uh, the uh, uh, roadshow clinic to uh, all the, you know, province in Indonesia and cities. So, uh, Okay, so uh, uh, in this clinic, actually, we are having, you know, we are planning to have the uh, training on the market penetration, product quality and uh, capacity improvement, as, as, as well as uh, literation. So we already have uh, two cities uh, with Bukalapak. So soon we're going to have uh, with the other platform. So the same, uh, you know, like, uh, we had uh, last week. Next uh, slide. So probably this is your last slide, yeah, Miss Aziza. Yeah, you. yeah. So uh, uh, I think the last two slides showing, uh, you know, the uh, uh, next slide, the last slide. Next slide. Okay. To the last slide. Uh, the last slide is, uh, you know, we are showing uh, to you the. Uh, collaboration between Ministry of Co-op and SME with other stakeholders to accelerate the uh, digitalization of uh, cooperative and MSME. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we will uh, really appreciate if uh, you all can uh, use our new hashtag, Berubah Digital. This is in Indonesia, this one. So appreciate if everybody can uh, go uh, with the hashtag Berubah Digital uh, showing uh, the commitment of, uh, you know, uh, Ministry of Cooperative and MSME to go digital, to transform digital. I think this is my last slide. Uh, so again, uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Apologize for any mistake that, uh, and, and uh, good luck. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. salam. Thank you, uh, Miss Siti Aziza for the... So there is some internet issue, but I think this is normal in this uh, new normal. I think happened in everybody because the internet access is not uh, stable sometimes. Yeah. So thank you, uh, Miss Siti Aziza, for the uh, presentation of your uh, session. So um, uh, next, uh, actually, I would like Miss Monica to introduce yourself and also uh, presenting the deck that you already prepared. Seven yes, minutes. hello. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm finished, so I, I'm sure I'm gonna manage that yeah. one. So thank you. <laughs> My name is Monica Likama. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Enfuse Financial Services. So I also used to be a banker before I turned uh, entrepreneur. And I started off a company five and a half years ago and we've grown quite quite a lot. And digitalization is really important for us. So what we enable is actually the issuance of money. So thank you so much for having me here. It, it's an honor to be presenting. And of course, uh, really looking forward to, to the collaborations in the future, especially within digitalization and enabling SMEs that are the backbone of each country to really have the best of breed in their services so they can really focus on their, their own business. But if we can get the presentation up, Yes. Yeah. So what so what we do at Enfuse is that we, we talk about payments that pay off. And what that actually means is that it is easy, it is embedded, it is easy to understand because in the end of the day, everything that we do revolves around money. So next slide, please. Uh, so what we do is the next level card issuing and payment processing services. So we enable the issuance of money. So, and I think here we have unfortunately some animation. So if whoever is presenting could click 
through that I get a full slide of texts. Just click on the, yeah, just a little bit more. A uh, couple of times clicking more. Yeah, so just click until you get the whole slide presented, whoever it is <laughs> who's presenting. But I really like the uh, previous, uh, previous uh, presentation from Ms. Aziza because collaboration is the key. So if we look at the uh, side of our core values, collaboration has always been something that we really strive on. And now the slide is full. Thank you so much, whoever it is. So collaboration is really the key to succeed. The uh, collaboration is the key for excellence because we talk about people's data and people's money. And of course, sustainability is really important. I'm going to deep dive into it a little bit more. And of course, the world is digital which means that these kind of conferences can be held, but even more, we can service each other globally. And the way that we can actually build wealth and, and diversity and inclusion has become better than ever before. So next slide, please. What we, and then just click through, yeah. So what we do, we enable the issuance of different kinds of money, being it any, anything and everything from, from uh, cards, uh, consumer con uh, businesses, etc. So that's what we started doing. So I've been in banking for a long time and also in the telco world. So really enabling people to have easy access to different kinds of financial instruments is really important to guide and, and build the businesses that, that really help us uh, in the world become better. So if we go to the next slide, uh, I have a couple of use cases on the things that we have done. So if next slide, please. Here are just examples uh, from the Nordics and Europe that we have different kinds of customers enabling different kinds of things. So we really see companies building expense management solutions, uh, installments or so lending solutions, uh, personal finance management, payments, fleet and fuel. So we can really see that embedding uh, payments is really important, whether it be on an e-com e side or whether it be uh, between customers, I mean like consumer and buyers. Yeah, please, please just jump to the next slide, it's fine. But I think one of the biggest things that, that I love talking about and, and uh, what, what I really look forward having an impact on is the climate change, because the climate change is the big equalizer. Uh, it, and of course, it also is the big uh, divider of nations. So just as an example, if we look at, in order for us to actually come up to the 1.5 degree lifestyle, I know that we in the Nordics have a tendency of thinking that everything, we're so good and awesome, but actually we are really a big part of the problem. So an average Finn emits uh, around 10.4 tons of CO2 emissions uh, per year. And it's a lot to do with what we eat, how we live, how we spend our money, what we buy, et cetera. And, and it's really important that we start changing. And if we think about the persons in Finland, in order for us to keep to the 1.5 degree lifestyle, we will need to reduce our emissions with over 70% within the next eight, nine years. And then of course, even more. So in order to keep up to the targets, we need to be on around half ton of emissions per person, and especially in the industrial countries where, where we, are, we have a lot of more wealth, people are really thinking that in order to emit less equals living, uh, uh, lowering the standard of living, but that's not true. It's about actually uh, producing services in a more sustainable way, it's adding technology and it's of course reducing any kind of emissions and helping us people to understand the impact. So that if we go to the next slide, which is the second last slide for me, next slide, please. What we then did is we, we built a tool, a digital call, tool called My Carbon Action, which calculates uh, a carbon footprint on all purchases made. And it also enables the understanding of the climate impact every purchase has. And it also uh, gives a lot of personalized tips on how to become more sustainable. So if we look at Finland, for example, we are really forerunners in technology, in digitalization. We were the first country in the world back in the 90s to have a net bank. And now we really want to be a forerunner within the sustainability. But I think for us also, it's time to walk the talk and not just talk the talk. So next slide, please. 
thank you so much for having me here. I look forward to having discussion in this panel, and I hope I kept to my seven minutes. Thank you, uh, Monica. So yeah, if uh, any of the audience online or in the floor, you have any question, please prepare. After all the panelists, you can ask a question directly. So next, uh, Mr. Rahmat, the CEO of Bukalapak. Bukalapak has been grown so much. I remember I met Zaki back in campus 2012 when he got funded by Abi Harasan. It was starting like a bike marketplace, but now you guys like becoming like not an only in e-commerce, you do like offline SI by bidding uh, Mitra Bukalapak. So, Mr. Rahmat, can you share the story of Bukalapak and what, uh, what is happened now in Bukalapak? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mas Itawah. Um, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rahmat Kandini. Sorry, uh, my name is Rahmat Kaimuddin. I'm the CEO of Bukalapak. Uh, basically, I joined the company in January 2020. Uh, basically, replacing the founder uh, that Mas Italo mentioned, I just now Mas Zaki. So, uh, our company is called Bukalapak, which literally means in Indonesian, like opening stall. So, what we are is uh, an all-commerce tech company that uh, that we run, we run online marketplace and also an online to offline uh, service for micro retailers and small and medium enterprises in Indonesia. So um, what we are thinking of doing at the time, yeah, Bukalapak uh, actually started in 2010 uh, by three people, uh, fresh grads who learn about technology and the goal is always uh, thinking on how to empower small and medium enterprises. How can we empower them using technology? Uh, so, and the, the kind of things that we focus on is that uh, what we want to try to give them is uh, we want to give them access to market because typically small and medium enterprises, when they open their business, they have they only can access um, small market, like either their neighborhood or the, if they open like a side stall, a road, road side stall, then they can only access that, that road and whatnot, right? They cannot access the whole Indonesia. So how can we, how can they access bigger market? The other problem that we want to solve is access to supply and, uh, and or products for them to, to either to buy or resell. Because if, let's say, if you live in big city in Indonesia, in Jakarta, in Surabaya, then you have access to everything. But at the moment you uh, actually, if you live in, in the villages or even outside of the top uh, big cities, then it's harder for, you, for people to get uh, the supply. Um, one other things that we, we are thinking of uh, solving is the access to modern business process. Typically, small and medium enterprises do their business uh, traditionally, right? They they write things by in, using pen and paper. Uh, they don't digitize the inventory. They don't they don't have good bookkeeping, and and whatnot. It's just because they are yeah, they don't have uh, the capital to invest to build that infrastructure. And of course, um, you know, given given lack of let's say bookkeeping and whatnot, it's harder for people also to get access to financial services. If you, you want to uh, borrow money, um, you know, basically you're probably still, people call it yeah, un under un unbank or underbank population. So, you know, people want to see your track records, you don't have track record because all your business is actually done uh, manually. So what we are trying to do here in Bukalapak is to provide technology that is suitable to provide all that access, to open this, uh, this access to, to people. So one, one of the things that we do first was like a decade ago, uh, we started with a solution, uh, you know, which is online marketplace. We thought it's a good place to start because typically if you want to do commerce, you do it in the market. In the market, there's a, you know, uh, a lot of traffic, a lot of uh, big, big access to market, big access to supply. The price typically will be relatively fair, um, but 
the physical market is actually quite hard to access, especially you know if you if you are living in outside city, uh, and typically you actually have to spend some money as well or capital to get access to trade in that market. So we we create an online marketplace whereby everyone, as long as they get access to internet and a gadget, they can they can basically upload our marketplace, uh, install our marketplace, and start trading. They can up, start uploading their their inventory and immediately they get access of market from all over Indonesia basically with very very uh, limited cost and uh, we also provide infrastructure basically like uh, uh, an escrow account uh, service if you will so once uh, only when uh, when the goods are accepted that they release the money we work a lot with bank uh, with banks uh, for payment we also work a lot with uh, logistic companies to ensure that delivery of the physical goods can be can be smooth and we also have a, a third party that can say that oh, yeah the good has been delivered uh, properly to the buyer and of course uh, this online marketplace model has been very very successful um, a lot, uh, even in indonesia there are multiple unicorn sized tech company uh, doing online marketplace and you know this uh, this industry has been growing uh, but despite having many uh, companies offering uh, online marketplace service with a lot of investment, we, what we see is that a percentage of retail transaction, uh, in as a percentage of a retail transaction, actually offline is still dominant. So much more people still transacting offline uh, compared to online. Of course, during COVID, it grew very significantly, but it's still uh, maybe around 20% against 80% between online and offline. And most of this um, offline is actually done in the traditional level. So we are talking wet market, we are talking mom and pop kiosk instead of the modern retailer. So what we realized then is that uh, in Indonesia, we cannot only rely on pure 100% online service. Uh, because a lot of people still in the wrong side of the digital literacy and also in the wrong side of financial inclusion. So if you don't have a digital savviness, if you don't have digital currency, then unfortunately, you, it's harder for you to transact online. So uh, what we ended up doing is that a few years ago, we created an online to offline uh, service, uh, basically to, to be a bridge between this online world and the offline world using an existing infrastructure that is uh, available all over Indonesia, which is the mom and pop kiosk, the warungs in Indonesia. So what we are trying to do is we digitize this warung. What we mean by digitizing, we, we create an application, which if they download, uh, basically it provides them with a lot of business uh, uh, capabilities. First, they, they have in inventory to provide a service to sell uh, or resell digital and virtual goods like phone credits, like uh, uh, electricity tokens. They can also uh, pay bill. Uh, people can also pay taxes, uh, pay uh, travel agents and uh, tickets or, or whatever it is. So all the things that is digital, the, the, the warung can serve it now. We also provide, uh, uh, together we build distribution centers across Indonesia. Uh, that, uh, and then from that application, the man and pop kiosk can refill that inventory. Uh, without having to leave their their uh, kiosk. So if they want to buy additional, say, the instant noodles, the soaps, uh, the regular daily goods that they want to buy, that typically they, they want to refill, they have to wait for a physical agent to, to come, or they have to close down their shop and buy uh, from the market. Now they don't have to do that anymore. They can just uh, press the uh, order in our app, and then we'll deliver it to them. And because we have millions of customers we actually could negotiate a good price with with uh, with the principal and distributors so that now this mom and pop kiosk can get uh, access to better pricing and they get yeah. more money mr rahmat sorry your your seven minutes is up okay so thank you so much for the uh, interesting concept between online and offline <laughs> and i think yes you were right there is a lot of people don't have access to internet and I think you uh, guys launching this interesting Mitra Bukalapak. Eh? So I think uh, next session would be uh, uh, Mr. Ibrahim.
Uh, do you mind to uh, introduce? And you, the, I think we already prepared the, the slide for you to have a seven minutes presentation. Thank you. Salamat siang, Mr. Moderator and my fellow panelists. Greetings from Africa Salatan, uh, where it is now summer and it is a beautiful warm day. Although I would love to have been in Bali and been thrilled to be sitting on a beach in Bali, um, but circumstances are beyond us. Our two countries, Indonesia and South Africa, share many similarities. The cultural and historical relationships between the two countries are very strong. If I could have the slide presentation, please put up. Uh, just to start off, we're talking about digital in innovation for SMEs. Next slide. Uh, what is digital innovation? Digital innovation is basically the bringing together the adoption of technology processes and others to increase efficiencies, customer interactions, and to deliver better customer service. Uber did not invent the taxi industry. All that they did was they streamlined the process of being able to grab a tag and to be able to move people around. Next slide, please. And so we've seen that digital adoption has been scaled across the world and, this, and this, the amount of money that has been spent has been confined to the larger businesses, the larger corporates and the more developed countries. But as we have moved across, we are now seeing that digital transformation is being adopted in smaller companies, in SMEs, and this is where our focus is today. Next slide, please. The five main reasons for digital innovation, and most companies have this at their center and their core, and Monica spoke about the core values, but why are companies adopting digital innovation? And that is to put customers first. It is no longer about what size the company is, but the customer has become the main focus. And how do you get the customer to be central to the transaction and to the process of the company? And that is where digital innovation is actually democratizing business. Next slide, please. And so we've seen the benefits of digital innovation. Where companies have adopted digital innovation and they've gone with technology, they've built resilience into themselves. So they've been able to withstand external shocks, such as what we, what we witnessed last year with the lockdown caused by the pandemic. It's increased business operations. It's transformed the customer experience. And most customers are now happy to grab their handphones and their mobiles and to sit on an app and to transact to the company rather than picking up the phone and speaking to a call center and waiting for 10 minutes for someone to service them. It's increased the agility of the company in able to be responding to customer needs because there's been greater data that has been generated through the technology, which is giving better access to the insights of the customer and the customer transaction. Of course, it's increased liquidity and access to finance. And I'll explain that in a moment. Next slide, please. And so COVID-19 has been the game changer. And the game changer has been not because the technology didn't exist, the technology has existed there all this time. All that it's done is that it's created this greater convergence and this need to adopt the technology so that businesses could survive through the pandemic. What has been the, the most uh, exciting part of this is that how all this collaboration, uh, City Aziza spoke about collaboration. The collaboration has come together. All the different facets of the different industries came together to make certain that the customer enjoyed the last mile delivery. So whether you were enjoying food that was coming from a restaurant via Uber Eats, or whether you were ordering online from Amazon and it was delivered to your door, you didn't have to leave your home or your desk, whether to go to work, whether to enjoy life, to enjoy uh, the cuisine that you were normally used to, all of that had now converged into bringing the offline and the online world slide, please. And so within the SMEs, and this is where I'd like to focus, is that once digit, one SME start adopting their technology, we've seen a revolution. And if I can give you the example of what has happened in South Africa, with broadband connectivity being central and access now being more universal, companies are able and small companies are able to access a wider range of technology. So if we were to take an example of a plumber or electrician who is going to do a home visit, he's now able to invoice his customer electronically, receive his payment digitally, 
put out onto social media the wonderful service that is delivered to his customers and therefore build a better following around the business. Even the street hawkers in the markets and uh, Rahmat has spoken about the market, the digital market and whether it's the online market as well. And you have these small hawkers in all parts of the world who are constrained by the fact that they have to deal in physical cash. They have to take physical cash and go to their suppliers to buy goods. They then have to keep that physical cash when they have been selling to their customers. And when we merge the two together with using digital technology, which we have done in South Africa, and unlock digital payment for those hawkers, we have equipped a number of hawkers across with almost 2,500 hawkers in each city have been, in, uh, have been equipped with digital payment solutions. So now they are able to access a wider demographic of customers Myself, I don't carry a wallet any longer. I can go up to a hawker, tap my phone and buy bananas on the street. That hawker now has the ability of using that transaction to build up a credit history, which allows them to access finance from either the digital payment provider or from financial institutions. And now it's creating a better ability of that small enterprise to be able to interact with the suppliers to understand what the supplier's uh, um, stock holding is, to push through orders through to the suppliers and allow the suppliers to also build an insight of that Hawker customer. Next slide, please. And so the entry level has been democratized for SMEs. It's no longer a costly operation. 46% of small companies are now incorporating digital uh, technology and they're receiving uh, or they're responding that there's an increase in the turnover. It's created better efficiencies in those companies. And because we have this ability now of bringing in technology at a very cheap price, it's allowing small companies to start adopting it. And this is where it moves the engine of our economy because these SMEs are seen as the resilient and the growth of the economy post-pandemic. Next slide, please. And this for me is the telling part. Maybe we need to go one more slide. They can live in the old world or they can live in the new world. They will die in the old world, but they will live in the new world. And this is where SMEs need to start thinking about digital technology. Digital technology is the future. And if small companies, even the hawker is not adopting that digital technology and that innovation, uh, they are going to see themselves being put out of business. Trima Kasi, thank you very much. I hope I kept to my seven minutes. Thank you, Ibrahim. Trima Kasi. So thank you for all the four panelists uh, sharing. I think everything is agree that digital transformation for SMEs is very important. I think now there's a lot of platform like Bukalapak. So even an offline SMEs can, uh, can be productive uh, by working or to collaborating with startup. So actually I have already started to have a question. So this question is actually for uh, Monica. So these questions is coming from uh, online from Tias Puji Kusmarini. Yeah. So uh, Miss uh, Monica, is that possible to implement European micro SME style to developing countries like Indonesia? If it's possible, how is the best way to implement it? Yeah, sorry, it broke up a bit. What was the, I just missed the actual question. So. <laughs> So is it possible to implement European micro SME repeat. style to, to developing countries like Indonesia? Is it possible to implement? Yes, definitely. The answer is yes. And, uh, and I think like uh, the previous speaker talked about, it is actually about uh, the broadband or like when we get 5G or 4G. So when you get the actual bandwidth, which is not that awesome uh, for me currently, but, but in, in general, that's when digital transactions can really evolve. So that's when you can actually have the payment methods in your hand ev everywhere. And I think it's really awesome to see the activities happening in Indonesia. And I really hope that there is a good collaboration with really good telcos because the like the MNOs, the network operators are in a key to facilitate the infrastructure on which you then uh, can really build a strong uh, payments landscape on the SMEs. And of course, I'm fortunate to, to be born and live in, in Finland and Sweden, where we are, of course, uh, really known for our internet and bandwidth and everything that we have on our phones. So definitely the answer is yes, 
but here they of course the government needs to make sure that the the network operators has a good way of building out and the infrastructure is built in a way that also the ones living in the rural areas can have a good way and an affordable way to be connected to the digital world. Thank you. So actually, I have a follow up question for you, Monica. Actually, in the slide, you mentioned specifically about uh, carbon footprint. And since uh, I think how how important for SMEs to see this uh, contribute to the fighting also of the climate change here? Yeah? yeah, well, I would say it like this. There are multiple layers of why it's important. First of all, of course, it is important. I'm a mother of four. So we will all be affected by climate change, period. And some parts are already horrifically affected. And of course, it's, it's growing. So it, it's in everyone's, uh, everyone needs to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. But I also believe, and I can see it fortunately also starting to happen, that people care, which means Hello, uh, maybe we have some internet problem with uh, Monica. Hello, Monica. Hello, Monica. So maybe we can move to the to the next uh, question. Maybe after Monica's internet, we can going back to to her question. So uh, I think the next question to Mr. Rahmat uh, from Bukalapak. This is actually a very interesting question. If you can, uh, the, the question is coming from Felicia Rebecca. I think, what is the future of micro SMEs in the Indonesia in the next 20 years? So it will be 2041, considering the current rate of people getting familiar with e-commerce, because 10 years back, 2011, even we don't even dream there is a company who can, uh, we can buy stuff in Bukalapak and send it to our home. We don't even dream 2011, yeah? So Indonesia has been growing so much. So, uh, Rahmat, what is the next 20 years happening at micro SMEs? Well, um, that is a very difficult question. I don't think anyone knows, <laughs> but maybe let me just answer what, what I hope will happen by then already. Basically, uh, the, the thought is that currently the SMEs uh, have, a, or especially the micro retailer, may have a challenge to, to compete with, with the big businesses, right? Typically, uh, you know, given the, the lack of capital and whatnot, right? So the hope is that uh, in 20 years, using technology, even though they don't have uh, in a, uh, a lot of capital, even though they are not in the big cities, they can give uh, similar services uh, compared to the modern retailer. They can also uh, basically get a lot of services uh, from, let's say, financial uh, financial services. Meaning, they can get they can get uh, a working capital loan. They can have access to simple ERP, for example. Uh, using software as a service, they can provide, uh, you know, they can sell millions and millions of goods. Uh, basically, uh, you know, not only the hundred, like uh, the instant noodle, the soap, or whatever that they currently sell. So you can be a very complete offline retailer, but uh, even though you're, you're actually in the village. That is what uh, we hope actually moving forward. Thank you, uh, Rahmat. So I think um, actually there is a very interesting question. I can start with uh, Monica first. This is the question coming from uh, Jari Sinkari, the ambassador of Finland. To all the panelists, maybe starting with the, 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 the Finnish citizen. I would like to know if any of the panelists have encountered elements of digital diplomacy of any country in their business activities. Yeah, Hello, I think Monica. the question, yeah, I'm just thinking about what Yari is actually meaning with digital diplomacy. I can see his face, so he's smiling, but, but I do think that if I interpret, because he asked a question I can't understand, so I will answer whatever I want to. So uh, I would say in general, of course, 
uh, it's a collaboration between between the governments and then the uh, businesses and then i do think that we should really look at the world more uh, collaborative and i do think that the ambassadors should should really be the ones uh, you know hooking the, the the countries together as again if you think the climate change aspect we need to fight this thing together and we can prosper as a nation and, and, and the world together. Because, you know, the good thing in the end of the day, if we don't find solution where we lead a more sustainable life, we as a humankind would die. The planet won't. So it, it would auto correct anyway. But since I don't really understand what Yari meant, but Yari can, can send me in Finnish an email later. But yeah, and, and I really have to say thank you so much. My Finnish Swedish operator, Telia hasn't been the most stable one. Uh, so thank you for having me and please feel free to send me any questions, but I, I think I'm running out of bandwidth now. So it's been a pleasure and an honor to be yeah. here. Thank you, Monica. So Monica have uh, other urgent meetings. You need to left the, the meetings, but thank you so much. But thank you. actually Monica is so easy. I reach her over LinkedIn. She responds directly. So anybody want to reach her, she can be reached over LinkedIn as well. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Monica. So I think uh, I think the, the the question I think go to uh, I think Ibu uh, Aziza already left. So pa Chandra, yeah, who replacing her. So I think back to the question from Mr. Jari. I would like to know if any of the panelists have encountered elements of digital diplo diplomacy of any country in business activities. Mas Chandra, Mr. Chandra. Oke. Okay. Oke. Okay. Uh, sebelumnya saya minta maaf, uh, saya pakai bahasa Indonesia okay. dan saya izin juga Bu Deputi ada kegiatan selanjutnya, jadi saya izin untuk menggantikan Mas Italo. Salam ya. kenal Mas. Salam okay. kenal. Oke. Siap. Uh, Jadi memang Kementerian Kooperasi itu sedang kita mencoba untuk masuk value chain e, dunia ya, Mas ya. Dan memang tadi yang disampaikan Bu Deputi itu di 17,6 persen itu yang kita targetkan untuk ekspor. Dan kita juga sudah bekerja sama, Mas, di Smesco itu ada BNI Ekspora dan juga e, apa namanya untuk pasar di ASEAN dan lain-lain. Jadi Banyak hal yang dilakukan juga, kita mendorong juga, Kementerian Kooperasi sedang mendorong untuk UMKM kita untuk go global dan memakai teknologi untuk bisa memasarkan barang-barang asli Indonesia ke seluruh penjuru dunia. Seperti itu, Mas. Oke, okay, thank you, Mas Chandra. So, uh, back to uh, uh, Rahmat. So, uh, in Bukalapak, do you guys encounter element of digital diplomacy uh, of any country nowadays? Yeah. So, I, I don't know whether this is part of uh, digital diplomacy or not, but we do have a lot of connections uh, with with basically foreign representative of foreign countries. Uh, a lot of them is typically because uh, they are interested with our SME solution, uh, especially the Mitra Bukalapak. Uh, people from also the, yeah, the developing countries as well want to want to see how can we uh, grow the solution and they're interested to, to learn a little bit more and of course uh, we are quite happy to discuss this uh, with, with people because I think you know uh, online solution e-commerce has been around for maybe 20 30 years now um, but uh, we just started with online to offline um, with SMEs. Uh, this is this is uh, ongoing, and Indonesia is actually one of the leading uh, in in terms of uh, this technology. So yeah, I mean maybe those are the kind of things that we have uh, we have seen before with with the foreign representatives. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the interesting asset of Indonesia, I think for example, Bukalapak is one of the unicorns. I think I don't know how many unicorns now in Indonesia. Every month we have new unicorns. And I think what Buka, what Mas Rahmat saying is really, I think the combination and online and offline something very uh, innovative in Indonesia. And I think many of other countries actually would like to learn from Indonesia and from Bukalapak. And maybe to uh, Mr. Ibrahim. So what is your opinion about, uh, do you have any encounter element of digital diplomacy uh, of any country in your business activities? 
Well, I'd like to be at uh, the spot that the ambassador is sitting at at the moment. His uh, background is uh, wonderfully inviting. Um, but uh, just to answer his question, um, last year during the uh, extended lockdown, uh, the many African countries were discussing procurement of PPE. And uh, this was done online. Um, you know, we were able to, in Africa, create a centralized database that allowed different uh, suppliers and customers being the uh, di different departments of, of health and the ministries uh, of the various countries to be able to access uh, consistent information so that uh, they could procure the PPE for the different countries. Uh, the embassy in Pretoria has been, the Indonesian embassy in Pretoria has been very active in uh, building the trade relationship between South Africa and Indonesia during the lockdown. Uh, the ambassador has hosted a number of uh, online meetings with the various chambers of commerce and with the uh, different businesses in Indonesia. And I think that that has uh, created the ability of businesses in South Africa and Indonesia to continue transacting with each other, even though we face this hard lockdown. So maybe that might uh, give a little insight of the experience that we had in South Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Ibrahim. So actually, there's another question for you, uh, uh, Mr. Ibrahim. This is from Arif, the Indonesian Embassy, Pretoria. Uh, how do you think the digital transformation for SMEs can contribute to the, end, the um, unemployment crisis in South Africa? And what can be learned from Indonesia experience? Of course, the embassy has to ask me the very hard question, how do we solve our country's unemployment rate? <laughs> Uh, okay, just to, to give some insight into what I believe is uh, the, the crucial role that SMEs play in the South African economy is that we, we have a very high unemployment rate. Our unemployment rate is sitting currently at about 47% of the employable workforce. And that is a social uh, problem which will translate into uh, some social instability in the future. Government is working a lot on how to create employment and I believe that SMEs, if adopting technology and innovation, can actually grow their own businesses and therefore create employment, employability within those SMEs. So for instance, um, in, in July of this year, we had a, uh, a, a challenge in the country where we had uh, some unrest in a particular area and a, uh, a hawker market was burnt down and those hawkers lost their businesses. We created a facility for them to, to quickly transact uh, a temporary facility where we equipped them, we gave them uh, little grants so that they could start off their businesses again. But within that space of three months, those SMEs were not only just equipped to start off again, but we created a skills and development program for them to skill them on business transactions. So they were able to scale up their businesses. And about uh, six of those uh, small SMEs, those micro businesses, have now grown to become suppliers into the market itself, and they've created more employment. So I think that um, if we support SMEs and uh, create the adoption of technology within those SMEs, there is a possibility that we could increase uh, the, the growth of those SMEs. Um, who knows, maybe at some point, uh, there will be a unicorn in South Africa like Bukalapat. Um, and, you know, we, we create that collaboration and, you know, we sh as I said earlier on, we share the similarities. I think that there are many lessons that can be learned from Indonesia and I'm a, and I'm a great believer that, uh, you know, we, not, we don't need to look westwards in order to find solutions for developing countries. We should be looking eastwards and we should be looking to each other to find the solutions. Indonesia has been very focused on the SME market. Uh, the development of women-owned enterprises has been very key in, in my experience. And I think that those are lessons that we can learn from Indonesia, is how do we unlock uh, the forgotten part uh, of our, the forgotten gender of our economy, and so allow even women-owned businesses to enter into the formal business uh, sector. So, you know, whether it's a basket weaver at home or the lady who's making pies from her home to sustain her own home industry, can we then bring them into the mainstream of the economy? And I think that those are lessons that we can learn from Indonesia. Thank you, Ibrahim. I think, yeah, we are, we are so lucky. I think there's company like Bukalapak, Tokopedia, Blibli, Tani Hub, Halodoc, Actually, everybody actually born before COVID. If these company never exist before COVID, I think the COVID would be very hard 
to us, but we are so happy to have this company. So maybe audience from offline, any other, anyone want to ask any questions? Okay. Please introduce yourself first, uh, pa. Yeah. And Wait, jalan mic-nya. Ya, yeah. oh, udah ada. Ya, yeah. terima kasih, yeah. uh, Bapak. Oh, Oke, okay. uh, dalam era digitalisasi ini, dari tadi saya berpikir sebenarnya. Um, I'm sorry, I'm using Indonesian. Oh, maybe I will use um, English instead of Indonesian. <laughs> Oke, okay, so uh, from the beginning, I rather op, uh, pes pessimistic for uh, micro, small, medium enterprise in this uh, digital era. Because this shifting is, uh, has a lot of changes. So even before the COVID, um, my name is Nyoman Sumarta, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I want, I want uh, the bus to ask you to introduce yourself first, Pak. <laughs> you are from where, Pak? Uh, I'm from Bali. Okay. So uh, I am um, a social entrepreneur. Okay. So my brand is Bali Zen, uh, which is uh, handicraft. Uh, brands okay. for home decor and also sustainable so um, we are assisting small medium enterprise for 30 years even before COVID small medium enterprises has a hard time to compete in the global market yeah and now adding a homework for them to be able to shifting to follow this shifting uh, period is I think it's a, um, like adding um, a thousand points to their weight to be able to compete. So, and Monica said about the, um, what you call that, uh, carbon footprint. And um, even before that, it's hard for us. You know, I'm spending like a, um, most of my profit to just assist the small medium enterprise because we are social enterprise. And um, my question is now, do we have mutual effort to bridging and assist small medium enterprise for nation in the world to make them able to follow this shifting or our system economy will be more um, sided to the people who has money so this is a big question because if we see on, the, on our value chains, it's already unfair. So how do we make this fair? So the small medium enterprise with the supply chains, they couldn't get the best price and the best quality to, for their production. And then they don't know how to manage their um, production uh, uh, ability and they have limited human resources. They have limited access to um, affordable financing and then knowledge and then market, <laughs> then design and then all of that. Yes, there's a lot of um, what you call a marketplace, but they not assist them. So I'm in the field for 30 years and I feel this, there's hard time for us to um, uh, giving assistance and how do we get uh, access to the support? And this is a, a big question for me for everybody in this room. So because if we really want to um, make a fair uh, economy to all the people, let's do this. A, a lot of big companies make a lot of profit at this time but what about the small yeah and okay. this is we need to really let thing uh, serious not just talk if we just talk here it's just mean nothing we okay. just like wasting our time wasting our everything so let's talk seriously thank you thank you pa so i think this is actually very interesting uh, question to to rahmat of bukalapak i think this is a typical SME stories that they need funding, they need place to, 
to promote their product. Maybe you can share some of the stories of what uh, Bukalapak did. Yeah, uh, thank you, Pak. Uh, basically, of course, uh, SMEs has a lot of problems uh, that you have described before. Yeah, uh, it's hard to get capital. It's hard to get uh, market access, uh, and like you know, and you actually live live that for thirty years. So basically, we don't need to explain more. Yeah. But what I could say today versus maybe like 10 years ago or 20 years ago is that at least now there are infrastructure that can help people to access big market. And those infrastructure typically is actually quite uh, cheap or afford affordable. For example, in that on in the online marketplace that there's already we, we have in Indonesia, we are lucky to have a few platforms, yeah, online marketplace. Uh, if you open a lapak, for example, in Bukalapak, then the, the, the fee is actually start from 0% until to like, you know, very low single digit and you only pay when there is a transaction. Imagine if you want to open a, a, a kiosk, for example, in, in the market, in Pasar Sukawati or whatever it is in Bali, for example, or a, a Ruko shop house, then you have to pay uh, money in the beginning, right, up front. So now, like everyone can can trade in the market, and like now, if you upload it, everything is actually accessible uh, to to the whole world, basically, to for, for people to see. The other thing that we also have is uh, also in, in capital, yeah, in in uh, financial services. The moment people start. Uh, transacting online or uh, selling online, be it in the online marketplace or in Mitra Bukalapak, all the transaction data is recorded. And all that transaction data is a good data that we can present to the financial services or banks. So if people want to borrow money, for example, um, once you have a good track record, you have been selling, you, you have like, you know, you sell for a few million for a few months, uh, now your transaction, uh, you are bankable. The banks will want to give you the capital because they are comfortable with with uh, with the track record that we already have. So those are a few things that uh, that is already there. Of course, uh, that, that that is uh, some other issues in terms of production uh, and whatnot. And that, that's like I think there are other companies that try to solve that. But in terms of providing market access, providing. Uh, providing access to financial services, I think that the, the companies, the technology that, that is in Indonesia today uh, is already uh, quite, it's much more advanced than maybe like you know, 10 years ago. And of course, uh, we still need to do more. Uh, that's why uh, we keep doing a lot of education, uh, try to digitize, uh, uh, introduce this service to people. Uh, we work with uh, Ibu Aziza from the ministry as well. So yeah, I mean, this is an ongoing ongoing uh, process. Thank you, Mr. Ahmad. I think, yeah, I think one of the things that I think Bukalapak and uh, Kementerian Koperasi doing is more into the uh, empowering the digital literacy among the SMEs because I think the whole business actually changed, the operation changed. And I think uh, I have another question from the floor. Um, can, 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 I, can I just... Uh, Okay. Provide some uh, some opinion. Uh, okay. I think that the, the 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 question from the floor is a very important question. Is that how do SMEs be supported? Because there is this perception that the smaller businesses are being left behind, while we have the growth of companies like Amazon and the rest of them uh, becoming trillionaires. Uh, it's a reality. But let me share a slightly different perspective that when you talk about entrepreneurs and small businesses, we actually see opportunity in adversity. And so companies like uh, Groupon uh, were created not when times were good, but you know, during the SARS uh, uh, outbreak uh, to allow suppliers to, to offload the excess goods. And so I believe that uh, this time represents a very unique opportunity for the SME world in that the digital technology that is available has become democratized and freely available. We are now able to transact anywhere in the world. 
uh, business has become borderless, it's become currencyless, it's become cultureless, and it's become timeless. And so uh, the ability of a small SME, and I'll give you an example of a lady who makes handbags in Indonesia, who I've transacted with personally, uh, over her Instagram account, and I was able to buy a handbag from her, um, purely because she had marketed herself uh, very phenomenally on social media. And marketing today is not about the high cost I am muted. <laughs> it's about the ability to tell a story about the product. And I think that there we have opportunities for SMEs to sell their unique stories in order to sell their products. So I have great hope. I know that there are pessimists amongst us, but I remain an eternal optimist that SMEs can actually become the global businesses of the future. Thank you, Ibrahim. So I think uh, one super short question from Mbak uh, Silakan okay, okay. before I close the, the session because... Uh, okay, uh, thank you before for the time. Uh, my name is Beauty Sukarno yeah. and then I'm from uh, Technology Management ITS, okay. Surabaya. Okay. Uh, I want to ask to the Ministry of Co Cooperative and SMEs, actually to Ms. Aziza. Maybe I will mix uh, with English and Indonesia because... Pakai bahasa Indonesia make, aja nggak oh, apa-apa. Okay, okay, okay. Cepat aja mbak. Iya, yeah, jadi uh, pertanyaan sangat simpel sekali sebenarnya. Uh, terkait tadi apa yang dibilang sama Mr. Uh, Ibrahim, COVID made the game changes is actually real. And then, uh, apa ya, bisa dibilang uh, dengan adanya keberadaan COVID ini membuat pemain lama, katakanlah uh, seluruh, apa ya, seluruh... UMKM ini itu tuh menurut saya, menurut pandangan saya tuh tidak sepenuhnya adalah entrepreneur semuanya. Tapi lebih besar mereka adalah seorang reseller, katakan seperti itu. Dan bagaimana nih dari pihak uh, kementerian UMKM sendiri terkait uh, bagaimana mengembangkan tetap apa ya, can help and develop for the old players actually, biar tetap eksis dan gak kalah bersaing dengan reseller. Karena sejauh ini saya sebelumnya uh, selama hampir dua tahun, itu turun langsung ke, ke UMKM, khususnya di daerah Jawa Timur, dan mereka sendiri bilang bahwa dari pihak uh, dinas, maupun katakan dari dinas uh, ini ya, industri maupun uh, ekonomi ya, itu tidak secara langsung membantu mereka. Okay. Jadi mereka selalu kesusahan, apalagi untuk tetap eksis di dunia digital yang saat ini sedang booming seperti itu. Oke, okay. terima kasih. Mas Chandra, reseller. Gak semua orang kan entrepreneur, tapi banyak reseller. Ini klasik problem nih di Indonesia gitu kan. Mungkin bisa kasih super quick statement aja sebelum saya habis saya closing. Siap, yeah. oke. Okay. Jadi di Deputi Kep kewirausahaan di Kementerian Kooperasi kemarin kita melakukan research memang banyak produk yang sekarang ada di e-commerce itu memang kebanyakan juga produk-produk luar sebenarnya dan itu di kita nggak produksi sendiri gitu dan apa sih yang akan dilakukan sama Kementerian jadi semenjak tahun di 2020 kemarin kita mengadakan program inkubasi jadi kita bekerja sama dengan lembaga inkubasi untuk bisa menaikkan yang tadi. Ada target kita di 2024 menaikkan rasio kewirausahaan nasional. Jadi yang akan berwirausaha itu kita empowering untuk kita naikkan dari segi literasi digitalnya, kapasitas produksinya, kualitasnya, sampai ke akses pasarnya. Dan untuk yang established, untuk UKM-UKM yang sudah ada, itu kita coba naikkan percepatan dari segi dari segi usahanya. Jadi tadi juga sekalian perta, apa, menjawab pertanyaan uh, yang sebelumnya. Jadi untuk meningkatkan UMKM di Indonesia, Kementerian Koperasi itu sudah bekerja sama dengan beberapa pihak, salah satunya di antar kementerian. Jadi pengadaan pengadaan barang untuk uh, apa namanya di level kementerian, di level pemerintah provinsi, di level pemerintah daerah itu 40% harus bisa diserap oleh operasi dan juga UMKM. Dan yang terakhir Mas Italo, eh, sekarang ada kebijakan, kita punya kebijakan namanya Peraturan Presiden nomor 7, Peraturan Pemerintah nomor 7 tahun 2021 
30-40% tempat uh, aset negara itu harus dimanfaatkan oleh koperasi dan juga UMKM itu yang mungkin bisa menaikkan dari segi apa namanya untuk segi realisasi anggaran itu koperasi dan UMKM bisa mengeksekusi dan juga ada tempat publik yang bisa dipakai untuk UMKM dan juga koperasi itu yang menjadi okay. komitmen Kementerian Koperasi untuk bisa meningkatkan uh, UMKM dan koperasi Indonesia. Terima kasih. Oke, okay. thank you, uh, Mas Sandra. So I think uh, thank you. I just want to close this session and I think thank you to uh, Miss Aziza. Uh, Mas Chandra, uh, Miss Monica, uh, Mr. Ahmad, and Mr. Ibrahim for this session. I think if I can summarize, I think we all agreed that COVID accelerated the digital transformation. And I think we need to be keep positive that I think SMEs will strive and will learn more about digital literacy, about how to be exist online. And I think offline is also as important as online. So I think what Bukalapak did, that building an offline platform for all the SMEs that don't access access to internet. And I think one thing that we cannot forget, we need to fight this climate change because I think climate change will impact to everybody and to the business itself. So thank you so much for attending this session. Uh, please, all the audience, you can follow the closing ceremony of this Inter International Digital Diplomacy Conference at YouTube at MOFA Indonesia. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon from everybody from Bali. Thank you.